So if a person thinks they may have a problem with sex addiction, or maybe they're not even to a place where they're ready to call it sex addiction, you know, it, frankly, it doesn't matter what they call it. I think it's important that a person just recognize that they need help. If they look at their life and say there's uh, destructive behavior, there's compulsive behavior that they want to end, I'd say the very first thing to do is to get involved in a 12-step fellowship like Sex Addicts Anonymous or Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous or Sexaholics Anonymous. Organizations like this, uh, there, there are meetings all over, uh, not only over the country, but throughout the world. Even for places where there are no face-to-face -face meetings, they can do telephone meetings. They can go to www.saatalk.org and they can find a list of telephone meetings that are available seven days a week. So there are meetings they can go to. So I, I tell people, number one, you start going to meetings. The second thing you do, you get a sponsor at meetings. A sponsor is, is a mentor, it's somebody to, to lead them through the recovery process. Then they start working the steps. Working the steps means you, you take the homework that is given to you by a sponsor and do that homework and get the assignment each week and come back and uh, meet again the next week. If a person has the means to do it, they may want to consider seeing a therapist. And if they're going to see a therapist, they, they need to see a therapist that has specific training and expertise uh, in dealing with sex addiction. And it, it's not enough just to, for a therapist to say, well, yes, I've, I've treated one or two people, or I've had four or five clients that, that have uh, sex addiction. They need somebody that really specializes in that. A good way for a sex addict to begin is with my book, 30 Days to Hope and Freedom from Sexual Addiction. Now, in spite of the title, that doesn't mean that they're going to be cured of sex addiction in 30 days, but it does mean if they will methodically go through that one day at a time for 30 days, they can achieve freedom from all of their destructive behaviors and maintain that freedom for the rest of their life as long as they're diligent. There are other cases where there's even treatment beyond that, perhaps an intensive outpatient treatment, anywhere from, uh, from a three-day program up to uh, something that lasts two or three weeks on an intensive outpatient basis. And beyond that would be an inpatient treatment program. And inpatient treatment programs last a minimum 30 days to 30 to 45 days, and then they may be as long as uh, three months, six months, some even longer than that. And for the partners of sex addicts, I would encourage them to get the book uh, Hope and Freedom for Sexual Addicts and Their Partners. And in that book, they can, uh, there, there's chapters for sex addicts and there's, uh, there's also chapters for the partners. Um, what to do, what, how, to, how to move ahead, you know, what does a relationship look like, what does the rebuilding process look like. Um, and there's even a chapter in that book on when is it time to move on. Because the truth is, if somebody uh, went to a physician and they found out they had a terrible disease and uh, that disease was going to claim their life and they, they never heard of the disease, they would become an expert on that disease in, in very short order. And in the same way, somebody that, that struggles with compulsive sexual behavior needs to, to do the same thing. The big thing to, uh, to take from this is that if a person has a problem with compulsive sexual behavior or if they're in relationship with a person that has a problem, they need to get help. And that help needs to start today.